Mm. What was your biggest challenge in reestablishing and forming the new second fleet? Um, the, the biggest challenge in, in well, there's a lot of challenges, most of which are very manageable. The biggest challenge is kind of getting people to think a little bit differently. And reason being is uh, there's a whole lot of opinions out there on what the second fleet should be or what a joint force command in Norfolk should be based upon people who served in the, in the second fleet in, the, in years past. Uh, and it's not, you know, John Mustin says that, you know, John Mustin was formerly my deputy. His father was a second fleet commander at one time. Mm. And uh, it is not the fleet of his father or predecessors. And uh, it's a different security environment in which we're operating. I mean, there, it's more akin to what we were in the Cold War, but it's different. I mean, because the, the security environment in the Cold War was, it was a one single threat. It was the Soviet Union, which had a tremendous capacity and capability. Now we're looking at uh, more than one a near peer competitor, what we would call, in China and Russia, across all domains of instruments of power, in which they are uh, f they freely operate uh, in what we call a hybrid or gray zone activity in cyber, in information, in the information domain, in space, where they're doing things that, that all the time, uh, that we are uh, in a competition, a global competition with these, with these two great powers. And so it's a, it's a different environment in which we, but we've, we are tasked in the maritime, especially in the, and the reason we have navies is to assure the strategic lines of communication. Uh, and you'll, you'll notice that I don't refer to it as sea lines of communication, but strategic lines of communication from the seabed to space. And the, as, as I'm sure all of you know, the vast majority of internet traffic ru res runs on fiber optic cable that is laid on the bottom of the seabed. We know less about uh, we have we know less about the uh, the seabed in our globe than we do about the surface of the moon. Only about twenty percent of it is surveyed, and the, and you go up into the Arctic and you, less of that is surveyed. So it's a very very and there's a lot of exploration exploration that's still going on in the in the, in the seabed. So that, that is what we're charging, and we have to, we don't, we don't have a choice. That's why we have navies, is to ensure that we uh, free and rules-based order is maintained on the high seas, on the global commons, on the surface, above the surface, and below the surface.